Hi, and welcome to the final of the Abalone uh, Championships, World Championships at the Mind Sports Olympiad 2017. I'm Steve Rain. I'm Ankush Candlewell. And uh, we're here commentating on the final between, I can't remember the names, Ankush? It's David Pierce on the left and Van Stam Frochot on the right. Now, David Pierce is the all time medal leader at the Mind Sports over the last 20 years. He's an excellent games player, especially abstract strategy games like Abalone. And Van Stam Frochot. He's won the Abalone World Championships countless times, so this should be a cracking en encounter. Uh, so I've played Abalone a bit, and so I'm just going to go through the rules for those of you who haven't played before or forgotten. Um, the idea is that they're starting very fast now, but the idea is you get one move on your turn, and you get to either move a single piece, two or three pieces, um, and you can move them in the same direction. Effectively, if you move them uh, all in the same direction they're currently facing, you get to push anything in front of them. Um, and what you're trying to do is push uh, six of your opponent's pieces off the board before they put, push six of yours off, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And like most abstract strategy games, this is about central control of the board. And it's uh, quite a fascinating game. Yeah, so I, cause I mean, um, these are set up slightly differently to the way they're set up in the base game. In the base game, from what I've gathered, you have all the black pieces on one side and all the white on the other. And on here, on this particular one, it's an alternate setup, you said, where you've got kind of black and white together on either side? I believe it's called the flower setup. I'm not 100% sure. I think that the base setup is unbalanced in some way. So for tournament play, they have a different setup. Okay. And it makes getting the middle a bit harder to get because if you put all yours in one middle, you can get surrounded quite easily. Yes. If I remember correctly, there was some sort of like repetition rule that um, made the other setup like unplayable. So a repetition rule, so such as if they do the same move several times in a row? Yeah, there was something unbalanced about it. I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly okay. what. I guess when they make these sort of games, the experts at the game will come along and break the game somehow. Um, so Black's getting himself uh, caught a bit near this corner, near this top left corner. Uh, if White moves towards them, he can start pushing some of Black's pieces off. Yeah, right now no pieces have been captured. Uh, it looks like Black's got some central control, but as you say, there's this island at the top where it looks a little bit dangerous for Black. Yeah, so White made a move there where you don't have to push the pieces in the same direction. You find yourself often wanting to do that, but what you can do is take a row of three and move them to the side. So you can kind of move them out of the way of an attack, or you can move them, in this case, he's moved them into a way to stop Black uh, kind of joining their forces up as such. And if black, black has the opportunity to push a white piece off there, do you think, why did he not take it, do you think? So the previous move, black had three in a row and white had one on the edge? That's an interesting question. I think it's because he has that option at all points. If white were to move his piece uh, to protect that, then it would leave, right now there's a, a column of three white pieces. If white was to move the top piece out of the way then his two would become isolated and the black three in the center would have pushed the white two towards the edge so i think that piece is almost dead and it's just a matter of timing of when to capture rather than okay so now he's now he's now he's done the move i said he should have done last time whether i'm right or not obviously uh, he's a lot better player than i am i'm sure he saw that possibility but he just decided it wasn't the optimal time because uh, again, black. So I think it's more, a lot more about positioning. Because black had the uh, white had the opportunity to push a black piece off there, but rather than do that and leave himself isolated, he's tried to consolidate his pieces. I agree. Uh, so you were actually at the Mind Sports this year. Um, did you play in this event? I didn't play in the Abalone, but I played in many of the other events. Okay, what was your favourite? My favourite tournament would have to be the Acquire tournament at the Mind Sports. Oh, you do like that game. I've not actually played it with you, but you do seem to, uh, you, you go on and on about it. It's, it's just tactically really well balanced. There's, there's perhaps a little bit too much luck in the tile drawing variants, but otherwise it's just, it's the game of precision. Uh, so it looks like here, because like you said earlier, um, Black is controlling the centre of the board very well. Black's got a few pieces on the edge that White can attack, um, but in doing so, White might weaken their own position. And you've got this interesting thing actually, because white black's actually got four in a row in the middle, but you can't move all four at once, can you? You can only move it up to three. Well, 
What was your favourite event? Now, so your favourite event was a choir. What event did you do the best in? I won. I won a gold in a choir. Oh, congratulations! I got some other golds too. <laughs> You won it one year, didn't you? You won the overall, it was 2012, was it? 2013, I won the overall competition. Okay, congratulations. Thank well you. done. You've got an expert in the field here, guys. So, Black's got an Im almost an impenetrable uh, diamond in the middle, a rhombus shape, um, with threes going in nearly every direction. This looks like a very strong position for Black. So even though the scores are currently tied at one each. It's going to be so hard for White to find five pieces to push off the board. Five yeah. marbles, I should say. There's four marbles currently on the edge, but White actually isn't... He can get one of them, can't he? Yes. He can get this one on the uh, left-hand side. Now he can't. This looks positionally one for Black. Okay. You think it's all over now, do you? I do. So even though Black isn't using all of his pieces, the pieces that he is using is just using so efficiently. And the White hasn't actually got any ways to disrupt this kind of like behemoth in the middle. Where was the Mind Sports held this year? It's been held in London for the past Seven years, I'm going to say. Maybe a bit more. Uh, which venue in London? It's at the JW3 Centre in Finchley Road. Okay. And how many events does it have going at any time? At any one time, maybe there are about between three to five events, I would say. And over the course of the week and a half, there are a total of around 50 events played. Okay. Three to five a day, some, some more, some less. Yes. And are there any events that are multiple days or are they all one-day events? Uh, they're all one day events. Some some events are just one session and just say the morning and some events are the morning and the afternoon. It's it's three to five events at any one uh, session time, but in a day there might be like ten events possibly. Yeah. And they're adding more events each year, are they? Because obviously there are some games in the Mind Sports Olympiad that are fairly new, like uh, I believe Spender was here. Yes. And so, Spender's only been out like four years itself? That's correct, Steve. So sometimes if a game is gaining popularity, uh, it gets added to the mind spots if we think people want to play it. And obviously the game has to have a high strategic element to it. It can't, can't be too much luck involved. That's correct. Um, so again, just for those of you who don't quite know the rules, to push other pieces, you'll notice sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. To push other pieces, you need to have more pieces that you're moving than the other than the ones you're pushing effectively. So if you've got if black has three here but white has three here, neither of those sets of three can actually push the other three. Um, so it's why black's got such a strong position in the middle that all his pieces can effectively push any white pieces surrounding it effectively because he's just got so many in a row. Black, uh, White's threatening to push one of the black pieces off, but if he does that, he's just going to get pushed straight back off himself. Black's forcing the issue now. Black is always maintaining his strong central shape, and White has to do something to counter this, otherwise, eventually, his pieces are just going to get knocked off one by one, and the game will be over. Yeah. So, what could you do as White to. Uh, do you have to just wait for a mistake or do you have, is there a way to kind of um, get around this or kind of join your pieces up from the other side? I don't think there's a simple answer, Steve. You have to just keep trying to create some counterplay and I hope the black slips up. It's looking bleak now. There's a lot of the white pieces around the edge of the board that get pushed off. In fact, there's two that can get pushed off now and you can't do, you can save one of them, but that would just, that's not a, it seems more like a delaying tactic. I believe Black's going to get two white pieces from this move. He saved the one, but I believe if Black pushes the top row of three uh, facing left, pushes one of White's two off, White can't actually save the other one either, so he's going to lose both. I think if Black were to move that, then White could push his three on the left up one. Okay, 
and oh yeah yeah that would compromise black's shape a little bit so maybe he doesn't want to do that so white can now move his two bits into the space vacated by black and try and because black can't actually move him out of the way now can he yeah that looks like a reasonable idea oh he's chose David to chose, chose to move the other piece in that direction which is fine too because he still can't move it back out of the way and now David's got three white pieces pushing the two black pieces towards the bottom right. Exactly and now Van Star, he, he saw that coming and uh, protected his position by uh, getting a group of three to counter David's three. Because if David managed to push through he'd split up the forces of black. Yes, he would have like got, got back some central control. Uh, so he's threatening the third of David's three white pieces in a row here. David can counter by pushing up his three whites uh, towards the north position, but then Francois can... Not Francois. Uh, Vincent. Vincent uh, can push the white piece back. So yeah, so David's three in a row is gone, that powerful three in a got. So he can capture a black piece, but it's effectively doing it one for one now, isn't it? It would be a trade, because Vincent can now knock the white piece Back. he could recapture yeah so uh, black's taken a 3-1 lead here and so obviously any trades at one for one favor black because a one for one for trade will go from 3-1 to 4-2 um so blacks so white's looking for a a a um single piece without losing one i think i uh, actually bought this game in 2003, I went to a local game shop, a friendly local gaming store, and um, asked them what was new hot gaming. I'd just played Carcass on like a couple of months before or something, I really enjoyed that. And they said, what's the new one? They, they pointed this out to me. quite like my abstract strategy games, but often I find I've got no one to play it with. Have I played you at this? I don't, I don't think we've played this game together. No, we've played um, Boku, haven't we? We've played Boku. Yeah. And you, sh you showed me the... The GIMP series? Is that yeah, the GIMP series of games. Gimp. It's probably my f um, it definitely is a series of games. It's so strong and so strategic. Uh, the GIMP series is a games of seven games, I think. They've got a seventh one out now. The retired one brought another one in, and then they've now brought one called Link. It's spelt really weird. Um, and that's the only one I actually haven't had a chance to play yet. Uh, so that's the. this is the one for one we were talking about. It's actually going to be a two for one, isn't it? Because you can take another black piece off here, but you leave yourself in such a weak position as white. You can actually get a second black piece here. But you've got so few pieces left to start pushing around on that top left side of the board that you're just going to get swarmed by black in a sec. So if you do this. Let's see if he goes for it. He takes it. He's now gained one back, but he's in such a weak position now. He's going to move yet. Yeah. The Vincent has moved those out of the way. So David's just trying to escape with as many marbles as he can from that corner now. I believe he's going to lose one more if David moves those three black towards those two white in the top left. He's chosen not to do that. He's trying to solidify his position again. Remember, he's still 4-3 up. He's also four minutes up on time. So what happens if the time runs out in these games? I believe in... Well, in most tournaments, if you lose on time, you lose the game. Okay, so even if you're winning the game, but you've taken more time and you eventually got to zero time, you lose. Yes. In some tournaments, you get a time increment, which means after every turn, you get uh, a few seconds added to your clock. But it doesn't appear to be the case in this tournament. Okay. Uh, so now black needs one more piece to win the game. Um, so white can't even take any more one-for-ones anymore. White's got to find three black pieces on the board and he's still in a weaker position as well. Uh, that's interesting. So basically black has pushed a white piece into the middle of the black ones. White can't solidify it. And if black can move some out of the way and push that white piece towards the bottom left, white can't do much about it. That white piece is truly surrounded. Yeah. What's your favourite GIP series games? I don't know how many you've played. I've only played them with you. I honestly don't remember what each one was. So uh, you had... Um, Tsar was the one you effectively played in Cat and Mouse, making bigger pieces and trying to... You get two moves a turn, you've got to take on your first move. 
Um, my favourite is Yinch, which is off Fellow Like. Okay. You've got the discs and you're trying to get five in a row. Yeah, it looks over now because um, I believe... Black's got... It's actually 5-4. I missed a piece. I didn't realise there's been another piece taken, but Black is dominant now. Black can push this white piece. Yeah, so white can't get out that way now. There's not much white can do from this position. Uh, Black's just going to move that out of the way, I believe. Oh, no. Oh, it's even better. So he's setting this white piece. And he's still got that couple of white pieces separated from the rest of them. I believe the next move black will make, if white doesn't do anything about it, is to push those three, to the three black ones to the left downwards and pushing that white one towards the edge. Which white will give has a no can't here at all. Uh, well, we can move out of the way, can't he? In which move, direction? Uh, he'd have to move it to the left, wouldn't he? I think he's, he's realised, shaking his head, he's realised he's lost. I believe... Uh, Black's one there, yeah. White yes. couldn't avoid that, I don't think. I don't think so. So, Van Stam Frosho will defend his World Championship title. And congratulations to him. Yeah, well done. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, guys.